about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know Today we've got something exciting going on We want to take you along with us uh, We are looking at a used RV mm -hmm. Not just any used RV either We actually know a bit of the history on this one Back in 1993, we bought this trailer. It was one year old. Yeah. And it, our family enjoyed it for many years. This was before Courtney was born. We bought this. <laughs> and she loved it. We had a great time in it, yeah. but life goes on. Uh, we had sold the houseboat. We had bought the beaver. There wasn't really a need for two RVs. Um, so we sold this one. Uh, but now the beaver's stuck in the States and due to COVID, I don't know when we're going to get back there. Yeah. Um, plus, it's been away for two years and it's kind of nice to have something while we're here that we can get away out and once in a while. Yeah, totally. So the plan is we managed to score the keys off of the uh, own, current owners and they're interested, interested in, in selling. selling it. So we're going to go take a look, just a general look today, because it's been sitting for a number of years and we don't really know what kind of state it's in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go check it out today. If it's in good enough state to move forward, we'll do a more in-depth uh, mm. systems check and we'll take you along and show you all of that information. The first step will be opening the door and if nothing passes us on the way out, <laughs> step one's done. <laughs> yeah, so this is just... Um, I guess a, a real live plan because I know many people out there are wanting to get into RVs this summer and used RVs are part of that because the whole new market is booming mm. and rentals are booming so if looking at a used RV is for you you might want to just follow along and see how this goes but this we're is, excited. This is an inexpensive way of getting back into being able to do something so That's we're right. going to give it a go. Going to use the old truck not going with the new one. <laughs> And we'll have some fun. So come on, let's go check out this trailer. I'm just gonna grab a few things we might need. I'm gonna get a hose, uh, electrical cords, uh, ladder so we can get on the roof, and maybe if I can find some jumper cables to check the DC system. And we'll grab a ladder. We're here at the storage unit. This is it back here. <laughs> so we're gonna go take a look. I mean, again, we haven't been in it for years. But we'll see how it is. Yeah, I think it's been seven years. And again, she's a little bit old, but we're not looking for something brand new. We're looking for something that we can get into with very little cost. We're just wanting to get out and enjoy so let's go see the question is can you get in I don't know this tent maybe the is back really door close. there is two doors on this two-door unit so this is a 92 Prowler 22h <laughs> and you know once we get it all together if we can um, we'll take on a full tour but I'm gonna try and get in the back door any luck let me see It worked. Ooh. Okay, I'm afraid now. The door works. <laughs> what Make if sure something runs out? out. Fast yet. She looks the same. Does it? Yeah. Wow. Okay, there's a few stink bugs. Can we pull that step out? Step That's works. Not an automatic step. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like going back in time? It is. And you know what? We loved this trailer. When we had this, we had some of our best family memories in here. And that's why we want it back. Okay, so the plan is, now that we're in here, to do just a general walkthrough of everything. See if there's any glaring, obvious 
issues um, to help us determine whether we're going to spend any more time on this or not. Uh, and then if there's areas, we'll do a little more focused investigation. So bedroom area, um, in general, the roof ceiling doesn't look damaged around vents. It doesn't look like there's any leaks. The flooring system feels good. It's really actually in great shape, like almost like it was when we gave it back. Into the kitchen area. Um, oh, I can't wait to give you guys a tour and tell you what I think of every little bit of this. But <laughs> at this point, we're just looking to see any, you know, like there's no damage around the window area. Um, then it comes into the, um, there's a second door here and I'm not seeing any issues there. The floor again feels quite sturdy. This is the extra bed or dinette. Um, climbing under there, I don't see anything of concern around these windows, especially these front windows. That's an often obvious spot for damage. And again, I'm not seeing anything there around any of them or the roof. So I'm liking that. You know what else? It's not stinky. <laughs> right? Like when you first walk into a used rig, especially an old one, it can hit you. If there's a smell that hits you, that means something. There's a big closet here of which we had put these shelves in. And that seems to be fine. They were supposed to be, to be temporary makeshift shelves because I had an office in your drawer. Oh, that's right, you did. We use our RVs for everything. Fridge, let's, this could be an issue. Oh, it's in. It's not bad. This is a 28 year old trailer? Yeah. Maybe we'll see if everything works, right. but it looks not bad. I guess the main point is when you're going to look at something used, you need to decide whether it's worth your time and energy to do a more detailed inspection of systems or pay for someone to do that. Let's take a look in the bathroom. Again, um, we're looking at areas around the vent. I see there's been a wasp nest in there. Or two, yeah. <laughs> So there's that kind of stuff. Um, but overall, I think with a good cleaning, I'm not seeing any leaks. There's nothing indicating a problem around the toilet. And of course, there's this is just the cosmetic once over. There's much more deeper look that we'd want to go into. Let's go check out that bed some more. We like the fact that it has a made up bed. That was one of the features that brought us here to begin with big closets. So let's check out these windows. Uh oh. Damn. What? Oh. There, there is an issue here. Okay. So it does look like there's a bit of water damage back here. So at this point in our general inspection, that's just going to be an area we need to focus on and determine how bad. Figure out what's leaking in. It does not look like it's come from the roof. So I'm going to guess that there's been, yeah. Maybe a corner seam or You can even see there's been some water on this curtain piece here. So that tells me it probably came from the window. Balance is that color. Are those back in yet? Or have <laughs> they come and gone and come and gone again? <laughs> yeah, that might be it. But we're going to need to have a closer look at this corner and this window and see what the cause is. Yeah, the ceiling does look good. Um, so we should take a look at the roof and yeah. the wheels and things like that before we get too invested far. too far with our time and figure this out. Yeah. Bummer. Mm -hmm. Almost perfect. So we'll have to take this mattress off and have a more thorough yeah. look. You might need a new mattress. Fishing rods down here. <laughs>
what? Huh. Huh. <laughs> so it has been leaking. And I do think it's probably from that window. Yeah, it's definitely from above, not down here. And I don't think it's from the roof. I don't think it is either. So maybe there's a corner seam on the siding or the window. I'm just going to pull this blind up. Huh. Blinds work. Huh. I'm just going to try opening this. Like it could just be that there's no seal or something there. Yeah. Well, I'll go take a look. Been backed into or hit by something. Yeah, like a overhead. Mm -hmm. Or a branch came a branch down on or it or something. Bummer. Siding's not torn or anything, but it's definitely bent. And you're going to have to have a good look at that when you get on the roof in that yeah. corner. So the next question is the window. I mean, these seals are popped out. Are they? Like this, see? Like uh, this. Yeah, yeah all the way around. Now I don't know if that's the culprit. I mean that corner seal looks pretty good. Like the here on this corner. Oh this corner here. And on this side. So how is the water getting in there? Well it's not perfect. No it's not. No. And we've only just started. Looking. Yeah. So the big question for us is there is water getting in. Yeah. Where and can we seal it up? It's not damaged to the point of mold or anything. It's, it's no. actually quite fresh. And I don't think it's rotten or anything. It no. certainly doesn't smell at all in there. No. So I think. It's not even really soft to touch no. or anything like that. So then we started looking for structural issues and we've, it's definitely, um, it's definitely been roughed up a little more than it was in our time. And, and who knows, it may have, it's been sitting in the storage area. So, so when you're sitting in a storage area and there's people that don't own your trailer <laughs> moving stuff around it, chances are it can be getting bumped into. And that's something for you to think about in general. Mm -hmm. uh, we certainly do when we put the beaver in storage. So that could be very well where that came from, but you don't think that would be causing a leak? It doesn't look like it. I mean, I'll go up on a ladder and see closer, but it doesn't look like it's perforated or pulled away or anything like that. Yeah. And It's not a hard no at that point. It could affect price. Oh, right? it'll definitely It'll definitely affect, affect price. price. But it's not something that we're going to walk away from and move on to something else. At this point, we're going to keep looking. Keep looking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that then. All right. So just check, there's the hot water tank. I see it's drained, the plug is out. Um, in order to check it, we would need to hook it back up, which we will do. Um, outdoor shower, I don't know that I can get in there. Probably with those keys. With the keys, maybe. There's our water fill. Um, tires, they look low, but they might be just sunk in the ground. These are, well, yeah, they are original tires, so they're 28 years old. So we really wouldn't want to take it out on the highway without changing to new tires. And while we're doing that, I'd get them to check the brakes, um, pull the bearings, repack those, because those probably haven't been done for 28 years either. <laughs> Furnace, fridge, we'll pull that off if we're checking that. Another compartment. It's got, the batteries are missing. Um, so we would need to buy new batteries. Uh, propane tanks are probably, we've not had it for seven years, they're probably either overdue or, or due to be recertified or replaced. Manual jack, nothing will go wrong with that. And then yeah, it looks like the awning too might have a little tear in it, so we'll pull that out and take a closer look at it as well. But nothing that can't be fixed. Nothing that I wouldn't expect on a trailer this age. And the price will reflect that. So are you going to climb up on the roof then? Yeah, I'll go grab a ladder. There is no ladder on this unit. So I'll grab a ladder and go up and take a look. See what we see. Check out that back corner for sure where it was, there was an impact. Yeah. 
How does it look though? It looks intact, like the corners aren't cracked. This was a one piece rubber roof. I don't know. What about around the vents? Around the vents. Looks sealed. Nothing's too bad. And there was no sign of water around the vents either from inside. It was just that back corner. See anything? Well, I kind of do actually. Um, it looks like there was another branch or something hit here. Okay. But, and, and this seal from the roof to the back metal, which folds over here, has some openings and it's cracked. The seal looks like it has some gaps in it and it's cracked a little bit and open in a few spots. So I would say it's a reasonably good chance that that's where the water could be coming in. The thing about water coming through, where it shows up inside isn't necessarily where it comes from outside. Right. Like it can travel um, behind a panel and then reveal itself somewhere else. So I would start there. So just sending the boss up to have a look. What do you think? <laughs> I see what you mean. And it does look very fixable. It does. Right? And this is where we need those spouts I'm always spouting about. <laughs> <laughs> Spouting off. But yeah, that's definitely an issue. Um, I and it's right in the area of the leaf. Yeah. I just kind of want to look at the others to see if they, they, the same material is what's around each vent. Yes. But I don't know if I should walk on it. It seems pretty sturdy. It's probably, I mean, you're not that heavy. Thanks. <laughs> those are a fairly easy fix though, and I don't see sign of leak inside around any of those openings. I know. But that would be a preventative thing to do for sure. Does it feel soft at all up there? Not even a bit. Really? It's super solid. Wow. All four corners have cracks in that seam. There doesn't look like there's any water damage inside except for that back corner. Is that where it's coming in? I don't know. Be a place to start. What do you see? <laughs> she was a solid unit in her day. She could take a little roughing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this seam, about the same as the other three corners. The dent area, seems to have no impact. I mean, it would be worth it to reseal these. Right. Um, but no, no other impact. And yes, it looks like it's been hit up here too. There's a couple of dents. But there's no punctures. It's, there's no. some dents, but no punctures, right? Yeah. Be thankful for aluminum siding. <laughs> okay, coming down. I got the ladder. Okay. Sort of, I'm kind of holding the camera too. Well, pay more attention to the ladder, please. <laughs> so, what have we figured? <laughs> well, after the general once over, uh, like we said, we found that water inside. So that's a fixable. It is, yeah. Within our level within of our, fixing. Even our level, we could fix <laughs> that. Okay. Really, the only, if that one corner yeah. wasn't got water in it, I'd be driving this thing out of here. Yeah. What do you think all that, just ballparking? Um, if there's no major issues with the brakes or bearings, yeah, tires, you know, worst case, probably a thousand bucks okay. to get all that taken care of. A couple hundred bucks for propane tanks, a couple, two, three hundred bucks for batteries. You know, fifteen hundred bucks. So it is adding up. And then the awning. I mean, if you're placing the fabric on that, I don't know what that costs. Right. I think if there's nothing that's stopped us from moving forward yet, then yeah, we need to check the systems. We need to check the hot water tank. We need to check the furnace. We need to check the fridge, um, the water system, electrical system. The water pump. The water pump, the DC system, AC, make sure the converter's working. Um, and depending on what happens there, that, you know, if a system has failed, then you got to factor that into the price as well. God, we're going to want this thing for free. <laughs> they may need to pay us. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, the goal here is to get a reliable unit um, 
at a reasonably economic price. I mean, it is almost 30 years old, so. Yeah. And we're not getting a new truck, and we're no. not, we're just getting what so, we can in a reasonable price range to go and enjoy until yeah. we can get back to the beaver. You betcha. So. Okay, well, let's move on to the next step then. Okay. So I see a possible issue right now, and that is that this switch here goes to a microwave, which we don't have, but if we did have it, or the hot water tank. And so right now it's on hot water tank. So if the switch at the hot water tank itself is on as well, and it was plugged in, it probably would have burned out the electron or the electric probe for heating the water system. It might not have ruined the whole water tank, but we'll check under the bed and see if that actual switch for the hot water tank at the hot water tank is off, because I hope it is. And should be off, because if it was winterized. Okay, so there's the switch, and I see it is actually on. So Where is the switch? That black beside oh, the cord. Right there. Oh, and no. it's on. So if it was plugged in, which I'm sure it was, um, that probe in the hot water tank would have been on and with no hot water in there there's no feedback to shut it off so chances are the probe is hooped um, okay wait a sec so the probe could be a problem or the whole hot water heater could be a problem. well probably just the probe because i'm thinking it would have burned out the probe i don't know um, but the propane side could still work i'm not really sure okay so we're going to check that further we will but I'm going to turn that off for now and that off so that we can actually plug it in. And if that's not buggered already, it won't bugger it further. Okay. So I mentioned there's no batteries on this right now. So I need to make sure that the battery connections are not touching each other or touching the trailer hitch because it could short some, some things out. So I'm just, the positive is here. I'm just going to hang it here so it's not touching anything. The negative is here and we should be good to plug it in and then we can see if lights work and maybe start the fridge things like that okay okay so we're hooked up to power um, 15 amp 15 amp i'm gonna turn the fridge on just so that it can run for a while and see that it works uh, there's a fuel selector it's off right now there's on electric so after a while these fins should start getting cold if it's working um, the other option is propane, and I would need to bring a propane tank, I think, because I think those are empty. And we'll turn some lights on. Those work. Cool. The other thing, I could probably bump the uh, water pump. Um, and I got this extension here. I can reach it. Water pump works. Yay. That's a good sign. So Denise has gone to plug into a different receptacle because we're blowing the breaker on that one. I'm not sure why. We'll try another one. She's also going to turn water on and we'll just check and make sure nothing's leaking in here. Try some of the taps. It will dewinterize it, so I'll need to let them know if we don't buy it. Um, but yeah, we need to check it out. So that's what we'll do. She's going to call me when she's ready to do that and stay there so that oh, I hear the power is back on. Um, in case there's an issue, she can shut it off right away. Are you ready for me to turn the water on? Uh, yeah, go ahead and turn it on. And we'll see what we got here. Okay, it's coming out. Do oh, I hear it? I mean, there's air in those hoses too, which I'm going to have to turn a tap on to purge out probably. It does sound like there's water running out. Is there water running out of the side? Maybe at the water heater? Can you see? Yeah. Turn it off. Turn it off. Okay. It's running out of there. But. Go away, you bugger. The drain plug is out too, so I'm not surprised. But that should have been bypassed. So I will put it in bypass with some valves inside. Ooh, and we'll try it again. So we had water running out of the hot water tank, but the plug is out. Normally you bypass the hot water tank, um, flood everything else, and drain the 
hot water tank. The hot water tank was drained. I'm just fearful that it, the rest of it wasn't winterized. So we bypassed that. Shouldn't come out of there anymore. We'll turn it back on and see if everything else is still sound. <laughs> and hopefully it is. Okay, try it again. Stop. Turn it off. Okay, we got issues right there. So I've just disconnected the water heater and we've closed the valve to the water heater on the other side. So by isolating that, I'm hoping we've isolated the leak and we can try again. Okay, turn her on lady and see if we have a leak somewhere else. Just turn it on and then get ready to turn it off, but not full like Not leaking out of there. That's a good thing. That's the hot. Cool. Looks like we might be okay. Yeah, I don't hear anything else leaking. It's still going to be a big expense. Um if we can get it cheap enough and it's limited to the water heater hopefully although we still got the fridge and the furnace to check out right so we'll see how that goes yep well one more let's see a little wrap up of the day <laughs> so we did some more work quite a bit more work so on top of what was issues this morning um we now know that it was not winterized properly there and the element was probably left on so that's probably burned out in the hot water tank there's some leaks when we pressured it up um, so in order to go any further we need to know how low they're willing to go on this yeah. price because anything can be fixed but um, you it, know, all, it all comes at a cost yeah. and so that's got to be factored in so before we even go any further and check out the rest of the systems we need to know what kind of price we're dealing with yeah so we're so, a little disappointed and a little discouraged, but we're not done yet. I would definitely rather pay a little bit more for something that everything worked as opposed to Because to this stuff. is not only going to cost us in money, but it's going to cost time. us in time. Yeah. So we got to figure that out and we'll get back to you. We're not done yet. Stay tuned. <laughs>